In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, in the box, you'll get a USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-A adapter, and no power brick. The device itself, you notice that it definitely feels like a premium device. Along with the glossy sort of stainless steel look on the rails and the bar, you get this lovely matte blue texture as well. Now, I personally love the blue color on this phone. It really pops, and I definitely don't think it's a color that you're going to get bored of. Google have always done different and out there colors compared to say Samsung and Apple. And I definitely think they should continue this trend. Now, as mentioned before, the back of the phone has a lovely matte texture, and I'm happy to say that it doesn't actually cause any fingerprints. What I will say is the side rails definitely get dirty quite quickly. And that also goes for the camera bar as well. Google have had this same sort of design since the Pixel 6 now, and I definitely think it works. There's no other phone out there that has this sort of camera bar and I think it looks better than what Apple do with the sort of cluster of cameras and even Samsung, essentially the whole back of the phone is now a camera as well. The difference between a Pixel and other flagships out there is that you're going to get stock Android. What I love about Pixel devices is that it's stock Android. That means there's no bloatware on the device and unlike Samsung, you don't have three different internet browsers. This means that the phone should perform faster and you should have more memory as well. This is something that I've always loved about Pixels and it's something that has drawn me away from Samsung phones in the past. I think if you're paying upwards of a thousand pound for a phone, you shouldn't have various different apps that have just paid to be downloaded on the device as standard. When we first powered on the phone, it was a little bit slow. However, I do think it was doing various different updates and downloads in the background. And after they've all been done, I've had no issues with any bugs or speed. I would say this has always been a positive for Pixel devices and I definitely see some people still using Nexus phones out there with stock Android. Now, I've only just got my hands on it, so I haven't really had a full play around. So there's definitely more impressions to come. However, a few things that I've already noticed is that the face unlock is really fast. I mean, it's scarily fast. And it definitely feels a lot more secure than the previous Pixel phones. I've read that Google have done a lot of updates to the software for Face Unlock. This means you can even use it with banking apps, whereas previous phones you couldn't. However, something that I've noticed that's not really improved is the fingerprint sensor is definitely still slow. Now, one of the reasons you'd obviously buy the Pixel 8 Pro is for the cameras. We've obviously not had a chance to use them yet, but stay tuned as we're going to be testing them as well as all the other AI features, including Magic Eraser. You may remember from our Flip 5 video, I wasn't quite ready for foldables just yet. Now, although I'm not ready for a flip phone just yet, it doesn't mean that I'm not ready for Android. Overall, other than the start, it's definitely been a smooth experience. It's a lot more stable than it used to be, and I still love the customization that you can have. So we're gonna be putting my SIM card in the Pixel 8 Pro and seeing if Android can finally tempt me away from iOS. Stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next video.